air traffic controller. This is your captain speaking, Joe Hozempa. I have co-pilot, Johnny Blaze. This is episode 302 of Stogie Geeks, and we're about to take off. This week, we interview, in our second segment, internationally acclaimed cigar and spirits author, Richard Carlton Hacker. It's going to be a super cool interview. He wrote a book. It's in its fourth edition already. The name of the book is The Ultimate Cigar Book. And for Sticks of the Week, we bring in Drew Galvin and Jeff LeBlanc to discuss some Sticks of the Week. They are from, and they hail from the big, giant state of Texas. It's all right here on episode 302 of Stogie Geeks, and it starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. going on, my friends? Stow Geek listeners, episode 302. It's Johnny Blaze here. I'd like to welcome our main co-host, the man himself, Joe, the Italian stallion, Hazempa. What's up? How's everything going? It's good, brother. How are you? I'm so excited. I'm I know. so excited. In yeah. our second segment, we are interviewing Richard Carlton Hacker. We're going to talk a little bit about Big Blue. That's going to be a funny time. Yeah. And we're going to talk about his book that he wrote. And the timeline for this book is phenomenal. It came back. It came out. It's in its fourth edition. Um, we have a sample of one of the books that he had written here. Actually, we don't have a sample. We have the whole book. And we have a, 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 another book. And let me tell you something. These books are just like cigars. They're journeys. You, we're going to dive into them and talk a little bit about the content. But that's in our second segment, so you definitely want to stay tuned for that. Stoy Geeks listeners, if you go to StoyGeeks.com, click on a banner at the top. It says J.C. Newman. Every quarter they give away a humidor. You can register to win one. Check them out. Uh, also, uh, if you're ever down in that Tampa area, stop by J.C. Newman. They have a self-guided museum. Uh, they're doing some crazy renovations to celebrate their oncoming and uh, coming up anniversary for 125 years. A um, lot of history there, and you can learn a little bit about cigars and a little bit about their line. Um, super pumped to have them aboard here on the Stoy Geek Show. Uh, also, um, you got to follow me on Twitter, right? Because Facebook, this is not, I'm not raising a flag. But Facebook is looking into stopping alcohol, tobacco, firearms. Um, that's why I always tell, you know, there might be some discussions and privacies and, and all of that stuff. If you follow in the security news, uh, Facebook's going through kind of a security restructure uh, there. Uh, a little bit more slapping on the wrist and some fines. So uh, we all know how people love to attack alcohol, tobacco, and firearms at any level. Um, therefore, anything you need, you go to StoryGeeks.com. But if you want to keep the conversation going all week long, you can follow me on Twitter. It is my whole name. So it's Joe, H-O-Z-E-M-P-A. You can check that out. We'll put that in the show notes to follow along. Also, you go to StoryGeeks.com slash 302. That is today's episode. Uh, Johnny Blaze is helping me in the co-pilot seat for the show. And... In Texas, we have a live remote via Zoom meeting. I almost said the, the Skype card, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? We have live, we have uh, Drew Gavin and Jeff LeBlanc. Gentlemen, how are you? Doing well. 
doing well. Thank you. No. Oh. Well. I want to take the time to talk to you guys about introduce you guys um, to the Stoy Geeks audience. If you guys want to give, you know, quick 30 second synopsis of each other, where you guys are in the industry, what Jeff's position is there at the shop. I don't want to steal any thunder where Drew is and all that type of stuff. Cause we are going to be reviewing sticks of the week first this week, just to accommodate a uh, time zone structure um, con constraints with our guests. So you guys can do rocks, paper, scissors, or draw straws to see who wants to go first. Go for it. Jeff. All right. So, uh, I've been in the industry about seven months now. I yep. uh, kind of dove into it first. Um, the long story short of it is I had a real shit day at my other job, and I live down the road from the shop, and uh, was going by, kind of turned my head and looked, was like, oh, cigar shop. Fuck yeah, I need a cigar. You uh, turned at the light, came in, met Nomi. He hooked me up with, uh, I believe it was something by Drew Estate, because I had been smoking... Uh, you know, pipe tobacco for the longest time mm -hmm. and uh, just kind of dove in from there. Uh, and then one day I was kind of chilling back here and he's like, can you cover a shift on Sunday? Like, I'm here anyway, man. You might as well start paying me. Yeah. So, and, uh, and from there, uh, ended up being manager after, uh, I want to say like a month and a half and, uh, and really just fell in love with uh, the cigar industry. Yeah, sure. So, uh, and after that, you know, I've obviously moved on from the infused cigars and uh, I've really just kind of been bouncing around everything. Nice. So whether it's, uh, you know, Connecticut's medium to right now smoking a dark Sumatra, um, it's the only ones I really kind of don't like are the real <laughs> super, super dark woody ones. Uh, that kind of along the lines of my father's, but I'll I'll go ahead and finish one out anyway, just so I can kind of get a flavor for about four of some of our we, customers. Over time, uh, over time, you will become a believer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, we'll honestly, your your story is very common, right? You bring up a lot of good points, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, there, the cigar industry is extremely welcoming, right? Yeah. Uh, in aspects, especially in the retail aspect, right? Um, yeah. You know, you don't want to get employee burnout. Some of the shops are small. Yeah. Some of the, it always starts. It always starts with someone hanging around the shop, doing that there, and then taking on a bigger role, bigger role, bigger role. So that's super cool. You, yeah. It sounds like in your journey, you know, mo Drew, Drew Estate, I mention this all the time, it's kind of like an entry level uh, cigar for sure. Uh, yeah, they, you know, they have some the super cool. Some some super cool stuff as well for the experienced smoker. Oh, yeah, their but, umbrella is huge. Yeah. You know, they have some really uh, fantastic cigars that, um, whether you've been smoking for a handful of months or several years, yeah. you can find something that's that's truly amazing. Yeah, there. absolutely. So, and if we have a little time for this interview, if not, we can catch you next time. Want want to take some time to talk to you a little bit about your your roles as a manager and some of the brands and absolutely. and kind of like what makes your executive decision. Uh, to say, okay, we're going to give this company a shot and give them right. some, some shelf space. If we don't get to that uh, there because of either my ADD or something like that or because uh, our sticks are so super cool that we're going to review, um, yeah. we will uh, get to that there uh, for, for sure. What's the name of the cigar shop uh, over there in Texas? I see it in the background. Yeah, it's a little blur on our end, but it's Prestige Cigars and Lounge. Yep, cool. Yeah, absolutely. And Andrew? What are you doing? Yes. How'd you how'd you guys get get uh, going in the industry? Well, myself, I, I've been I've been smoking cigars. I would say probably for the last uh, I'm going to say last decade, uh, off and on. And then I when I moved here to Texas in 2013, uh, kind of took a little hiatus for a while. You know, got my career situated over here, coming from San Diego. Uh, basically. Uh, Went around, visited some of the other cigar lounges in our area. We are, uh, uh, yeah, I live in Irving, which is about uh, about a few miles from here, and uh, just started visiting cigar lounges, and then uh, uh, I found Nami online. Uh, basically, just what I like is customer relations. I like customer service. I'm in the customer service industry. I've been in the hospitality business, and then working in the insurance industry. So for me. It was important to have a good experience, uh, uh, exhilarate that through good knowledge, uh, uh, good welcoming atmosphere. 
uh, some of those things I just couldn't find at other cigar lounges. And so I uh, met Nomi and, uh, and Jeff and man, I'm talking about an experience. It has been, it's, it's been whirlwind uh, as far as uh, I walked in here, talked to Nomi, told him what my preferences were. And he uh, basically broadened my, my experiences. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all about developing your palate. You know what I mean? It's it's all about developing your palate. It's all about your journey, whether you do cigars for social or whether you do cigars because you like the taste or whether you do cigars because you want to go through an exploratory phase uh, there. There's certainly a wealth of knowledge out there. There's so much that you can learn. There's so much that I continue to learn uh, ju just being a host here on the show uh, and doing the interviews ab about the industry and the process and, and whatnot. And, and, you know, uh, it does get political at times uh, for sure. Uh, it does get territorial at times, but l any any kind of industry does. So uh, that's super cool. That's super cool. Well, welcome to Story Geeks. Um, why don't you tell us, uh, why don't you start with one of your sticks, Drew? So one of my sticks, well, this morning I'm, I, I decided to uh, showcase uh, a Texas Lancero mm. uh, by Bradley. And as you can tell, it's not a typical Lancero. Uh, it's very... Uh, uh, girthy, <laughs> uh, 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 but uh, for me, it's just uh, learning the different uh, ver uh, varieties that are out there. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, uh, one of my first sticks I smoked, and I'm going to tell you, I, I went big. I went with the Roma Craft uh, uh, Neanderthal. Neanderthal, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I, I went with that and loved it and from there I, I i explained to jeff what i what i like about it and he's just led me down a, a whole uh, path of different uh varieties that uh match or are equivalent and uh but anyhow uh yeah this takes the lancero right now i mean i'm just i mean i'm, I'm enjoying it it's uh it's uh, a beautiful put together stick by alec bradley uh, it's just, you know, the construction is beautiful. Uh, the veins, uh, really are coming through nice. Uh, just loving it right now. Do you normally smoke some of the bigger ring gauges? Uh, no, uh, I don't. Uh, but this is one of the ones I wanted to, I've been wanting to try. The other one I have here is the LFV, uh, uh, double Lajero. Mm. And, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, most of the time, you'll find me with a Robusto or, or a double. Uh, yeah, a double Toro. Double or Toro, like yes. Uh, you'll find me there uh, just trying to, you know, expand my knowledge and my palate, mm. uh, understanding the uh, the uh, the different uh, fillers, uh, you know, where they're, where they're grown, uh, why they're put together, uh, what it is that we're, that they're trying, not trying, but what they're, successfully uh giving you uh as an experience with their state mm -hmm. yeah absolutely uh, i'm looking at your list here that that you had sent me um let's take some time talk about your uh i'm smoking the the brand now but uh the Altura fluente grand reserva yeah yeah why don't, you, uh, why don't you take the story geeks listener uh through that are you familiar with the story geeks rating system i am i okay. am i've been watching I've been watching Stogie Geeks. I'll tell you what, I went through about, I, I have Stitcher. That's my, uh, that's my platform I go to. And I've listened to uh, uh, quite a few different uh, shows, uh, podcasts. And in there, I found you guys uh, through there. And, uh, man, I loved it from day one. I mean, I, I started watching the early on episodes mm. and, and then kind of leapfrog once you came on. Uh, not, not, I didn't know you. <laughs> sure. Right. Right. I, I love the, I love the way that, uh, I love the education. I love the, the way the interviews are basically off the cuff. Not basically they are off the cuff. Uh, nothing scripted. Uh, you, 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 uh, warm up to the guest. The guest then opens up. And, uh, to me, that's in the likeness of customer relations, customer service. Uh, because if you listen to, your guests as they're as they're speaking you you start to figure out the passion sure. the 
the understanding of why, you know, the, the process they go through. And I mean, it's a very tedious process when they put together a stick. Um, and it's just interesting to see that uh, and hear that uh, from coming from the, from the, uh, uh, the manufacturer, the procurer, the, procurer uh, the ambassadors and what have you. And what, and what have you. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, it's a yeah. great business. I mean, you can start off with a million, and then after 12 years, you have, like, 500,000. It's genius. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you, 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 you clearly have to enter this business in oh, and yeah. So, for in, me, it was passionate. just like, yeah. it, was a, it was a no-brainer, uh, very simple, uh, but yet uh, very engaging. Uh, those are the qualities I like about when I sit down and speak to uh, anyone, uh, whether it's we're talking about liquor or we're talk, uh, some of the whiskeys, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, any kind of uh, 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 coffees, gotcha. uh, things of that nature. Just right. understanding uh, someone's point of view and, and, and listening to them. Uh, I've learned in the last eight months how everybody's palate is different. Oh, yeah. And, and, and what they're engaging in at the moment, uh, where that moment is taking them. Right. Uh, Again, the experience, I mean, it's just phenomenal. It, it, and, it, it, it is an individualistic journey for sure. Eye on the yeah. prize. Arturo Fluente, Grand Reserva, Florafina. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Give us your notes. Give, give the Story Geeks listener a taste if they haven't had a chance or if they want to re rekindle with, with the brand. Yes. So with, uh, what, with my... Uh, with my uh, uh, so this cigar is a... Uh, you know, it's a... Uh, it's a medium body. Uh, flavor was medium. The strength is medium. Uh, that's how I. That's how I interpreted. Uh, I found notes of uh, you know chocolate, cocoa, uh, black pepper, some cedar wood. Uh, then going into the floral, and then on my last third, man, I was I was really liking the the earthiness of the cigar. Mm. Uh, the 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 charcoal how it came through. Uh, pretty much. Uh, through uh, halfway through the cigar, and from there, I mean, it, it started to be a very, a very enjoyable experience. Uh, the pepper came through uh, light, uh, and then progressed to a medium. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking at my notes here, so if it, all of you guys on online, I, I, that's what I'm looking at here. It's all good. Uh, yeah, uh, it progressed to a medium. The uh, the pepper, uh, uh, the oak uh, mild with some vanilla, giving this. Uh, Cigar, smooth flavor throughout the uh, throughout, uh, aromatic, mellow, uh, good consistent flavor and easy spice. That's 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 what I got out of this cigar. Right. Uh, I love your I love your notes where you specifically said about the construction, good burn, and then towards you get towards the end, the mm -hmm. end, the end to me of any cigar is the decision. That yes. final third, because sometimes, right, sometimes any cigar, right, you, 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 it can get ashy. You can start to, it can burn too hot. Now, some of that could be human error for sure. Some of that could make a, uh, a difference if it's guillotine cut, V cut. I like the deep V or bullet preference, yes. right, um, there. But when you get towards the end and it leaves you with that, man, right, I wish it was an inch bigger, right? Hold all right. jokes aside or emails, right? You know, I wish yeah. I had another inch, right? And, yeah. and, and to me, to me, that resonates, right? If you can, right. and yeah. if I can have it multiple times, meaning if I pick it up a month from now, a year from now, six months from now, whichever, when I do that, um, I want to have that same experience. Because personally, right before the show, I went next door to uh, one of our partners, Havana Cigar Club. I ordered a Bloody Mary. Picked out two sticks for the show, and I I literally go to a shop for two reasons. If it's a shop I, I've I've frequented, right? Uh, I want to pick out my smoking experience for now, right? Because I yeah. I expect it to end like this. Whatever it, whatever notes aside, um, if it doesn't, I get heated. If it if it's inconsistent, I get like, man, why can't they get their stuff together? Plenty plenty in that arena. If I go to a shop where I'm doing travel, it's what the heck haven't I had? And I can't wait to get to one of your sticks that was extremely popular before, uh, 
a couple years back, and I've never had it, and I've been chasing this stick for a while. Uh, chase, not, not to, chasing not, it in my travels, you know? Like, not to give anything away, but me and him smoked one stick, and what you're talking about, how it's finishing at the end, mm -hmm. absolutely fucking killed it for me. I mm. was ready to give it a really strong rating until it got down to about the band. Yep. And that it tasted like it was biting into, uh, almost like biting into an aspirin. Sure. And Dude, it, it absolutely changed the rating for me. Yeah, sure. But you now see if that happens, now if that happens, like I, I believe in the smoker's negligence, right? Not blaming you. So, I'm 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 saying yeah. in general. Because sometimes, you know, I'm a talker, obviously, right? When mm -hmm. I'm when I'm having a cigar with, with friends, like my mouth is running, right? My my yeah. mouth's always going. Apples are fall from the tree. You think I talk a lot, you should meet my my my, my mom, right? Anyway. You know, it's like, you know, it, it, sometimes if you keep lighting it or whichever, it's got to have that even keel. You know what I mean? Right. And, and so, so I, you know, before you throw the baby out with the bathwater, I would pay attention yeah. to how, how you smoke it for sure. Shot for sure. Yeah. 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 But based off that one, uh, and whenever we get to my reviews, you know, you'll see kind of the differences in uh, first and second tries for yep. sure. But based off that one time that I had that cigar, ah, fool. Yeah. <laughs> so, did you guillotine it? Did, did 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 you do a guillotine or did you do like no, uh, straight cut? Straight, yeah, yeah, it's guillotine. Yep, yep, yeah, for sure. So, uh, what would you rate the Arturo Fluente Grand Reserva Florafina, size A five eight? I rated that as a as a box split for me. Okay, yeah, for me uh, only because uh, I know when I come back to it, and I've done this with several sticks at this point in my uh, smoking repertoire. Um, I just I, I, I go back to it and I and, and I'll find some subtle uh, changes, but not too extreme to the point where it 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 it, it second guesses my first mm -hmm. experience with it. Yeah, yeah. A part part of that is the brand. I mean, you know, Arturo Fluente, Padron, they they've been they're, they're they're staples. You know, Diamond Crown. You know, they they they're just staples. Maximus line. You know, it, 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 you know, as long as they don't astray and get rowdy, you know. I know Romeo and Julieta tried it when, you know, historically Romeo and Julieta were known for the Dominican. We have a Nicaraguan boom. We always talk about here on Story Geeks, and uh, Romeo and Julieta says, "Well, we're going to come out with this Nicaragua," and it didn't. It didn't do well. Like it, it just, you know. And and I I wonder if you took off the label and gave it a different name, if it would do better. Because people would associate it. Because people had smoked Alto Flamante before. People had smoked a Padron before. You know, people had smoked David, you know, so Drew Estate, you know. So sometimes when you smoke something, you expect it to taste like that. And when it's completely from a different country, it's going to taste different. However, you gave it a box split, and we are ready to move on. I smoked the Oscar from Leaf by Oscar, the Superfly. This is a Mexican Sandreas wrapper. It's over a Honduran binder, and it has some fillers from Honduras. Um, as soon as you say Nicaragua and Honduras and your Joho Zempa, uh, it, 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 it piques my interest for sure. Um, this came out at the uh, 2019 Cigar Con, right? <laughs> Cigar Con. <laughs> <laughs> right? Anyway. Uh, it's available in three different sizes. It's the Super Corona that is at five and a half by forty-five. It's available in the Super Toro six by fifty-four. I had the Toro first and uh, the um, uh, Super Corona second, um, and then it's uh, also available in the Super Gordo, which is six and a half by sixty. Uh, I definitely gave this a fiver. Uh, I like it. Uh, I love the dark wrapper. I think that. This is the strongest from their profile. It was uh, in the press release, full disclosure. It says that it's the strongest of their profile, for sure. Um, I love the subtleness of the Nicaraguan Honduras, for sure. I love that type of profile on my palate. Uh, I gave it a five and now because it just came out now, right? It just came out le le less than a month ago. Uh, I love the graphics on it. I think it's awesome. It's very retro. It's got that 60s feel, that freaking, you know, John Travolta, Saturday Night Fever thing going on. Totally like it. I think marketing is a huge uh, um, component of, of the cigar. Uh, 
can't wait to see what it tastes like in January, February, March of next year. Mm-hmm. And Perfect. if cool. it tastes, if it tastes like it tastes like it did a couple weeks ago when I had it, I'm giving it a box split. But for right now, the uh, Oscar uh, Superfly, I have to give that a fiver here uh, on this date here at Stogie Geeks. Yeah, I've been a big fan of what Oscar's done. Yeah, in the past. yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, uh, I mean, even even some of the the Island Gym line that that yeah. was there, uh, super cool. Had the opportunity to interview Island Jim on my radio show, uh, and had the opportunity to have dinner with him uh, through an event that was done via my radio show, and 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 one of the local cigar shops. Super cool guy, phenomenal background. Like he got, you know, he was uh, worked for a corporate Marriott, uh, pre cigars, totally in hospitality, understands to show people how to have a good time, right? And then um, decided to roll on to no pun intended to roll into the cigar industry he has his own shop leaf and bean i think it's called off the top of my head super cool place um yeah uh super cool guy if you uh ever have a chance to to try some of that line i think yeah. you should uh for sure uh andrew I, i'm curious i cannot wait anymore i want to know about this cafe connecticut cafe connecticut all right so, so Jeff, you, you had the yeah, Cafe that's, Connecticut. That's you, 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 you had the Cafe Connecticut, the 1901. Just for you yeah. Stogie Geeks listeners at home, it, it, he had the Robusto size, and that yep. was available in F5x50. 5 by 50 yeah. So the origin of this uh, uh, Honduras strength is medium, wrapper is Ecuadorian, which would, uh, when Jeff introduced me to this cigar, uh, I said, okay, that, that, caught, my, that caught my attention. Mm. Uh, the wrapper color was natural. Uh, the binder Honduras again, and then uh, the filler Dominican Republic and Nicaragua. So having those three uh, 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 as as a filler for me uh, really intrigued my my my, my curiosity. So uh, going down, uh, you know, the uh, my first draw on this was uh, you know a little bit of honey. You know, mm. uh, you know I, I like I like a little sweetness, and so it was very subtle. Uh, and then it went over to the mulling spice a little bit. Uh, I was actually picking out uh, a little bit of a uh, of a nutmeg, but then once Jeff and I started spe- uh, talking about it as we were smoking the cigar, uh, you know, I-, I understood where he was coming from on that mulling spice. So mm. uh, as I started to taste it more, uh, not because of what he said, but just because I was really concentrating on it, it, it really came through really nice. Uh, uh, and then following that, you know. Uh, on the woody side, uh, oak again, uh, uh, very again, very subtle. Uh, then it led into a floral. Uh, the floral just came in. Uh, I mean, for me, it was more like a almost like a lavender. Uh, mm-hmm. And again, that was a, you know my palate. You know, uh, yep. it searched out these 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 uh, you know interesting uh, uh, findings. Uh, from there, a little bit of moss, and then. Um, but uh, you know, very rich. You know, in the end, uh, tasty uh, for me. I didn't. I didn't have that uh, uh, that that uh, aspirin yeah. that, that bitter that Jeff experienced. But for me, again, uh, one of the first things I, I learned right away about when I take a stick is about controlling the burn. You know, controlling the. You know, not not to take it down. I'm not saying that Jeff did that, but. What I'm saying for me, uh, I, I learned those, uh, uh, you know, how to smoke a cigar, you know, basically. Uh, and then from there, I, I just, for me, it was a wonderful experience. Uh, but uh, at the end, uh, <laughs> I love Uh-oh. the butt comma. <laughs> yeah. But at the end, for me, uh, it, it's something that uh, you know, I, I, I just like the the lajeros. I I, I like the. I like the darker, richer, more full body, and for me, it was it was really on the light side. But yeah, like I said, smooth. Uh, I gave it an angler. You know, it's something that if I went out for a walk in the woods somewhere, yeah, or if I was out just kind of, you know, decided to go to uh, some natural preserve, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I would definitely take the cigar with me. But uh, other than that, uh, it, it definitely fell in the angler. Sure. Uh, 
so uh, Drew, yeah, we were, not uh, afraid to throw punches. Yeah, I like it. I, I like, like it. it. That that's a, you know, and again, it speaks to your palate. Yeah, so yeah, it's all about your palate. That's the thing. We were we were talking about it, and it, again, at the start of it, very nice for just like a walk in the woods or something like that. And but for me, getting down to that end, it's like I'm going to chuck that bitch down and start a forest fire. <laughs> yeah. It's sure. it just the end just killed it for me. Yeah. That being yeah. said, um, it would not be a bad cigar to start somebody off who has a very light yes. palate. Great or, point. Or, or uh, for women uh, who are not going to be into like the Lajeros, the very dark cigars or anything sure. like that. Kind of like a poolside cigar for midsummer. Yeah. So, mm. uh, again, negating the uh, the bitterness that I got at the end. Right. Possibly I smoked it too quickly. Maybe I got a, a, a dud. It's possible. Sure. So, uh, Sure. Uh, it got I, it. It when it first came out, it it, it received some 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 pretty decent ratings, and yeah. the story. So, and, I, and, and I got a little bit more like spruce and cedar out of it. Yeah. Um, and definitely like the little bit of honey and mulling spices were there for me. Yeah. Uh, and so, and the story behind it is super cool. Uh, yeah. There too, but um, you know, for for you story geeks listeners, you can you can definitely uh check that out for yourselves. Um. Hey yeah. Joe. Yeah. What I wanted to say was that I was telling Jeff when he was smoking that cigar, I said, you're, you're almost like Paul. You'll find that one. I mean, I enjoy it. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I was, I was sharing with him. I said, you're, 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 you're just like Paul. You'll, everybody else will say uh, will have a, 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 a decent experience with it. But he found the one that when he got down to the end, he was just like, oh, no. This That's is- the other thing. Whenever, whenever I took my, uh, my band off, there's a hole uh, right, uh, right underneath the band. Yeah. So yep. yeah, I always say if 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 you have a a, a a lower reading or a negative experience or or something of that nature, um, historically all the guests and all the I'm sorry all the hosts of Stoey Geeks have said you know go back and 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 retry it at a certain point oh, yeah. in time uh, there too and sometimes your your palate. It, it, you know, if you like the Lajeros, Lajeros, and, and you like kind of the medium, and then you have that. I mean, you, 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 I mean, you're, you're, you're throwing what? It's off the top of my head. It's Dominican. It's Dominican, yeah. and it's Connecticut wrapper. It's it's going to be super mild for you. Yeah. Uh, I also think that because of the lightness of the the wrapper, the Connecticut is the lightest wrapper, and so since it's the lightest wrapper, it's the most delicate. If we look at science. It's gonna burn. It's gonna burn the hottest, right? Oh yeah. You know, and, and, and sometimes that can 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 there and then, or or experiment in size, you know, or yeah. or experiment or, or experiment with the the uh, different sizes, and you you know you you might find yourself uh, into yeah, something that's, different that's for sure. Point. We have yeah. we have that one size, so it might be worth hunting down another shop that has it in a larger gauge. Yeah. So that might that might help out. Yeah. So at least yeah. with the experience, anyway. Yeah. So um, so yeah, I mean, it's worth the second shot, uh, at least to give it a better chance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if it, you know what, if it still sucks for me, then I'm not sure. Gonna to review sticks uh, historically, uh, Paul, founder of Story Geeks, Paul Azadorian, has always says, you know, you you got to go uh, uh, at least two or three, um, yeah. be, before you give a, a a solid review of it. Uh, right, yeah. And then from there, uh, you know, uh, rekindle it some six months later because it's amazing yeah. how your palate shifts. You know, I've, yeah. uh, you know, I've, I've been on. Uh, um, I mean, I, I like some of the bolder stuff uh, as well, even in the morning. Um, but yeah. you know, it, it, it really is amazing how your palate shifts. Yeah. Uh, there. Well, even uh, speaking of these, uh, what I'm smoking right now is a dark Sumatra. Mm. Whenever I started smoking, I could not stand Sumatras. Sure. Uh, I actually started to really enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, your your palate absolutely does change. Yeah. But being said, I still don't like the taste of bitter aspirin. So. <laughs> gotcha. All righty. <laughs> so. All right. I had the Diamond Crown Maximus. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, that's, that's a- I've, I mean. It's a classic, right? It's a classic. Yeah. I've ne- you know, I've I've might have reviewed it once or or, or twice in my in my re- re- reviews here on Story Geeks. I rekindled myself uh, with the line that Jason Newman has. 
um, a lot, you know, especially if we're going to be, you know, uh, a, a media partner and whatnot. And I mean, it's it's just classic. I mean, you know, you, you, I don't even know what to say. It's just totally, you know, they're a little pricey for the average uh, yeah. c- cigar consumer. They make a great gift. They make yeah. a great celebratory stick uh, for sure. Um, you know, with, with, with the Maximus, uh, you know, I, I, I love the, the attention to detail when they roll it, right? You, you have, um, you know, it's, it's, it's really like the sister cigar to, uh, considered to, to an Opus X, um, there, here comes the hate meal, hate email. <laughs> oh, Blade Mary's kicking in. Here comes the hate email. <laughs> Joe H is geeks.com. Sister Cigar, you're out of your mind. No, I'm not. Uh, there's plenty of write-ups that, that talk about that there, too. But, you know, y- y- you have a, a, a sun-grown wrapper, which, you know, I'm totally in getting into the some, some of the sun-growns. Uh, I love the Drew Estate FSG, FSG, Florida Sun-Grown. Right, uh, love the Gusta Ray, uh, sun, uh, sun grown. Um, it, it, it's you know, so with that, there you get a really nice uh, sweetness. Uh, to me, it's a little bit savory, and you with the Maximus blend, you, you, you're getting some, 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 some pepper in there. I mean, I'd give it a box worthy, box worthy could set you back because they are because, because, because they are they are priced up there, but. If you're listening at home and you know you 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 want a good celebratory stick, or if you are busy and you're going to a barbecue and you only have a chance for one stick of the day, if you're a multiple stick smoker, the stick's for you, man. You know, to, and and if you smoke it, don't do it on your commute in, into work. Sitting oh, in tra- like sit down, take the time out and enjoy it. If you've had it, you can take a picture of it. Tag me on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Uh, let me know. We can keep the conversation going on that. But, I mean, I'd give it a box split. It's classic smoke, and it's, 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 it's a celebratory smoke for sure. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, cool. So, what, else, what else have you been smoking? Jeff, you want to do one? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so my first one, let me clear out. I got my notes on my phone. And nice. I got, <laughs> got notes. Taking notes. Uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, I'm up on Cigar Scanner app, so if you guys want to read the full detailed notes on how to rip apart some cigars, feel free to go on there. I share everything uh, with the social part of that. So uh, my first one that I'm doing a review on is the uh, La Flor Dominicana Colorado Oscuro. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Not one of the most popular ones by LFD, right. uh, by stretch of the imagination. Um and do, do, what size did I have? Uh, let's just go with the uh, the Toro uh, number five, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my and this is one I did smoke twice. Uh, same box out of the humidor that we've had in there for quite a while, um, aged pretty well, and uh, smoked within like three days of each other. The first time around. Um, did a, uh, a punch on it and uh, paired it with a uh, an iced coffee, a little bit of water, um, and a, uh, <laughs> a a good metal album. Nice. Uh, I like it. I like the I like the so, metal part of that. <laughs> yeah, it was a nice, nice slow day in the lounge. Um, so you know, just able to kind of kick back and relax. Um, so the first time around, uh, did notice it's. I think just because of the way it's rolled, it does take a while to actually take a light to it. Uh, it's it's kind of resistant to that. Um, so you do have to, I don't want to say char, but you kind of have to brulee. Yeah. You have to brulee the foot quite a bit. Yeah, sure. To, to light up. Um, and the first time around, wonderful notes of like caramel and, and buttered toast. Um, and, and it kind of, so let me see if I can remember everything. Um, a little bit of cocoa and, and pecans and coffee in there as well. So a really, really enjoyable cigar. Uh, and fully ready because of the price point, fully ready to get it uh, like a box worth of rating. However, uh, the second time around. Uh, Jeff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> however, second time around. Uh, 
same thing. Did a punch, paired her with an iced coffee. Um, and right after the pecan notes started coming in, uh, I want to say maybe after the first third, um, uh, it's, it started getting, uh, some very unpleasant, like charred earth flavors to it. Um, and you could taste the notes that you wanted to come through, uh, but they were very much an underlier to, uh, like, again, just a very burnt charred flavor. And that remained throughout the entirety of the cigar. Mm. Uh, so with that inconsistency, maybe a fiber, because it is one I do have to try again. Yep. Um, but with that, with that amount of inconsistency, it's very disappointing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Let me ask you a question. Do you retrohale? Yeah. Uh, I inhale, okay. actually. So okay. uh, yeah. retrohale, French inhale, and full inhale. Okay. So, so I you... know it's very uncommon for no. uh, a lot of cigar smokers. Sure, they, sure. They do retrohale at best. Sure. Uh, but, uh, dude, I come from, I started off with non-filtered Lucky Strikes. Uh, <laughs> it went from that to uh, smoking a pipe. And yeah. no told yeah. me that, hey, don't inhale the bite. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I mm-hmm. fucking did it anyway. In your uh, developing palate's journey, I want you to make me a promise, yeah. okay? Yeah. And you can come back on Story Geeks, you can tell me I'm full of shit or I know my shit, okay? What I find is when you're clearly a smoker, right? So yeah. that's, you smoke pipe and you, you, you like metal and we, we, we get the visual. I get it. What I find is from your reviews you're getting some consistency and i'm not critiquing i'm not knocking i'm trying to educate all of us even the even the story geeks listeners it might you're consistently ending with a disappointing ending regardless of region and regardless of set you know rapper right because you have a colorado rapper in this example uh there you might be going fast and i I learned I learned this. This is absolutely positively true. I learned this from sitting in this chair as a co-host with Story Geeks way back in the day in a galaxy far away when Paul Azadorian was the host. What was that day, Joe? Uh, <laughs> what was that day? I know you know the date. Off the I don't top know the date off the top of my head. Uh, March 18th of uh, 2018. <laughs> right? Uh, anyway, um, you know, in... in um, what I found from listening to everyone who we were interviewing, and, and if you go through the storygeeks.com, you see everyone. What I found that, because I, I started getting that too. And then I was like, okay, well, okay, Joe, like, if I'm really giving a critique, because I went through a point where I was like, yeah, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Yeah. Now I judge my ratings on the consistency of the smoke, and if it right. leaves me wanting more. That's how I respect the the stogie geeks profile and rating system that's how it comes from me right what i think is that and i found myself that is i purposely slowed down the cadence of when i was smoking and what that naturally does is it doesn't make the cigar as hot yeah and at some point you got to start the 80 60 inhale like believe me i i inhale i inhale but i don't inhale every puff i retrohale a lot uh i believe that the 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 cigar smoke goes as well i don't retrohale well you're missing out on some of the nuances i'm not judging right but again try to smoke slower how to do that i mean i mean i don't know what 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 i did what I did was I literally said, okay, I'm going to smoke a Robusto. Because if you asked me two years ago or pre Stogie Geeks, right? A Robusto, 45 minutes. Toro, hour and 15 minutes. Anything bigger than a Toro, two hours, right? Make an effort to smoke a Robusto in an hour yeah. and a half Ooh, and try to make it last. And let me tell you something. You're going to open up or or go to a Lancero, not Andrew's version of the Texas Lancero, oh, yeah, little, which, little which, which, which I love the Alec Bradley joke. You know, the Texas Lancero is giant. Everything's big in Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 
picked up on that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, right? I love, I, lo- I love it, right? But uh, you know, make it a point to try to smoke a blue and try to do it and slow down your cadence. And I yeah. bet you, and and if you could do this soon, that'd be great. When you when you come back on, and I bet you, you either come back and say, Joe, you're full of shit, still tastes like crap. That's it. Because we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna expand on that. Uh, definitely not in this episode, but we're gonna expand on that, and we're gonna develop our journey together. And yeah. come back to me and 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 report back and let yeah. me know. Oh, and then two things. Real now quick. you gotta get a stopwatch. Now you gotta you gotta slow yourself down. You gotta promise me. Yeah, I will. Okay, good but answer. Two also, uh, <laughs> one that was the first cigar of the day, um, so I kept that consistent. But I might change that up so that way I'm not trying to smoke through it too quickly and trying to get a nicotine fix. Sure. Uh, <laughs> but also, I think I'm going to definitely try a different uh, different cut as well. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the punch cut, yep. uh, but I will keep that part consistent. But I think I'll go ahead and do uh, like a cross cut or yep. uh, maybe deep V on it. Yeah, stop, uh, stop, yeah, start with a cross cut. I love the deep V. I mean, where, where is it? Calibri made uh, makes this this, uh, yeah. no, this deep V. Uh, we got... Yep, but, there, but there's other ones there. Super so. cool. Yeah, so the same thing right here. Yeah, so, super cool. And then, uh, just you know, breaks after gotta, a half hour. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting on a pair of scissors <laughs> from Zycar. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so I can start experimenting with those. Yeah, Paul likes the scissors. He's got the whole scissor kit and the poker and all yeah. that stuff. Because he yeah. suffers from, so, from Paul syndrome. He gets plug cigars. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so, again, Absolutely. you know, with, with that one, fully, I'll fully admit it might be user error. Uh, it might be inconsistency in, in that batch. Don't know. Uh, but you know, it's totally one I'm going to go back to because yeah. the first experience was fantastic. It really was, uh, and I hate to leave it at a bad experience. Yep, that cigar because I want it to be good. Um, <laughs> of course, I want all cigars to be good. Yep, they're not always. Oh, as we all know, there are some just absolutely shit cigars out there. Yeah, sure. uh, but yeah, for LFD to make an inconsistent cigar with the amount of uh, quality control that they have. I have a very hard time believing that. Mm. So, um, so yeah, that's definitely one I'm going to come back to, but as of right now, I'm leaving it as a fiver because that's about how many I'll smoke this year. There you go. I got it. Hey, I, I got it. That's cool. They, you know, I want to know about this, uh, Drew. I want to know about your, Hoya La Amistad. Yes, the Hoya La Amistad. Oh, my gosh. Look at that one. Oh, my God. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Je- whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa. Who said that, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, go, go ahead, Andrew. I'm sure Jeff will have his commentary. Right? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I had to butt in just a little bit on that one because oh. that was a beautiful cigar. Nice. Uh, body medium to full, flavor was full, strength is full, which I love. I mean, I absolutely love the full strength. Uh, Coral 6x50. Uh, man, I'll tell you, this is one of those cigars for me that that I just I fell in love with. I mean, right off the bat. And from there, I'm just like, okay, it's it's in my rotation at least once every other couple weeks. Uh, and the consistency in this cigar is just Beautiful. I like the white pepper mm. uh, and spiciness. Uh, the cedar wood comes through. Uh, halfway halfway in, I'm at the nuts. I, I get a lot of, like, a roasted nut. I mean, just absolutely love that. Uh, and then uh, I got a little, another third in and started to uh, really ex- uh, uh, experience the espresso side of it. Uh, for me, this cigar... Uh, uh, the way I my tasting note on this was uh, white pepper, leather notes came through at first. Uh, at first, the spice of the pepper is intense but welcoming. Uh, red apple uh, came in to introduce a touch of the sweetness, um, and then as the second part of the cigar, the spice started to calm down and the aroma started to kick in. Cinnamon, uh, a little bit of clove, nutmeg. Uh, and pepper throughout. Uh, uh, for me, uh, I love pepper. I mean, I I love white pepper, red pepper. pepper. Yeah, yeah. I, I love it all. So if it has pepper, I love it. And I had to learn though 
that, uh, you know, when I'm eating uh, food that is very flavor flavorful, uh, one of the things I had to learn was not to not to overdo it on the spice on the food because that would numb my palate, if that makes sense. Yep. Uh, so from there, I, I started to you know take it down a notch in my in when I cook or when my wife cooks. Uh, uh, you know, it, 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 and it and it has it has really uh, uh, allowed my palate to really understand those uh, notes. Mm. Uh, uh, and then on that, your your uh, on the end of this one, the uh, nutmeg, paper came in uh, a little bit of cedar, and then your sense. And then for me, I, I wrote, and then your senses again kick in, and there is a sweetness of uh, a little maple syrup towards the end. Uh, the nutty came back through. Uh, the express were coming around to wake your ass up, and that's what, it, and that's how I, that's how I saw it. The uh, uh, General Cigars is the manufacturer on this. Uh, Origin Nicaragua, uh, strength is full. Uh, wrapper Ecuadorian Habano. So I get it now because I actually have been li- reading a lot about Ecuadorian Habano. Mm. Uh, uh, and then, uh, and then the uh, color of the wrapper is Colorado uh, Binder Nicaragua and filler in the so again uh I'll, that for me is starting to really come full tilt in my mind uh when i burn into this uh when i burn into a cigar uh starting to understand the complexities uh not really complexities i should say uh, yeah i mean well, that's that's fine yeah i guess yeah. so yeah a little bit of the complexities but understanding the marriage of these of the filler uh binder wrapper so for me, uh, uh, man, uh, this was definitely a, uh, what was it, Fight Chuck Norris on this one? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Fight yeah, Chuck fought. Norris. Wow. Yeah. But wow. I, I, I would let Jeff go ahead and fight Chuck Norris first, and then based on that outcome, <laughs> <laughs> based on, on that outcome yeah. I'll then concede probably because yeah. I, I love Chuck Norris. No, yeah. And, and my, my favorite thing about the cigar is the price it's eight dollars yeah and people people pass it over all the time yeah because they're looking it's like oh yeah it's just man, whatever well uh, yeah, i mean a lot part of that you it's a collaboration cigar right you have hoyo oh, yeah. and, and then you have yeah. aj and, aj, and it's, AJ it's, fights to be in that price point you know yeah I mean? and it he is wants, one of those you know. just absolutely hidden gems yeah. in the humidor and so that that really shows you it pays to go ahead and rummage around just like in the craft beer section of yes. the cooler at, at one of those, you know, gas stations that, you know, you frequent or a liquor store that you frequent. Pick something up that you don't know anything about. Sure. Because um, it, it, I don't care if you're picking it out because the label looks cool or just you've never seen it before, whatever. Because uh, this is one of those ones that we went in and picked out. It's like, have you smoked this? No? Okay, cool. I haven't either. Let's try it. Mm-hmm. Um because sometimes you'll fall flat on your ass and you'll get a, a dud, whether it's beer, cigars, whatever, whiskey too. Mm-hmm. Uh, every now and then you'll find something that is absolutely outstanding. And uh-huh. that is the case with this. And and again, it's $8. I mean, shit, you you could not pick a better cigar for $8 in my opinion. There you go. So that is that Flight is Chuck one. Norris is the rating. Uh, oh, yeah. shit. For yeah, the yeah, La for the That's good. There uh, you go. Uh, they, you know. Because that is one that, like, after Christmas dinner, you're you're fat and happy, getting ready to fall asleep. Mm. You light one of those things up, and you are in nirvana. There so that is one I'm going to crawl my fat ass out of whatever cave I'm in. There you go. And beat the shit out of Chuck Norris for that cigar. Absolutely. So it's absolutely. I'm 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 taking them on for that. Yep. One. Absolutely. So. Mark, is our guest ready? I'm waiting for that answer. Yep. Yep. All right, cool. Uh, Johnny, yeah. who has been co-piloting, mm. I, I had to wake him up a little bit. He'll yeah, be, uh, a little bit, right? He's enjoying his stick. Yeah, oh, He's great. enjoying his stick and having the, how, how's the Bloody? Uh, oh, the Bloody Mary is great. Don't you, do you love the Bloody Mary with the cigars? I love the Bloody Mary with the cigars, it's, especially it's, with this one. Uh, so I'm smoking uh, uh, Perla Del Mar Maduro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it, now, is this the Toro Robusto or Gordo? Do you know? That's a great call. I, I, I would go Robusto. Right. Besides on that. So, it's box pressed. Yeah, yep. ultra box press. Yep, yeah, ultra box press. Yeah. Uh, so I gave it a deep V on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it's Connecticut Broadleaf, uh, Nicaraguan. Um, so I'm getting some dark chocolate feel, and it's really creamy. It's really smooth. So mm-hmm. when I first lit the cigar, 
I was having a little trouble keeping it lit. After that first third, it's it's really kept its consistency. It was burning a little uneven, but uh, it's just a very creamy stick. Uh, I was kind of surprised that uh, it wasn't a little um, uh, it wasn't a little more robust mm -hmm. as, with the color of the wrapper, right? Because it's sure. a, uh, Connecticut Broadleaf. It's very deceiving. Yeah, it it's is deceiving. deceiving. I thought I was like, well, I, I seen the wrapper and I was like, well, this this is gonna be a it's gonna be a good stick, right? Yeah. And and it is. Uh, it's it's very creamy. It's very subtle to the palate. The retro hail. Uh, it's 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 earthy. Um, and the, the dark chocolate component with that creamy component and a little bit of spice going with that Bloody Mary is perfect. Um, so Had that this morning. It was when, awesome I, when, I, when I came in the studio this morning, yeah, lit that up, checked morning email, got some stuff done. Yeah. Had that stick this morning. Yeah. Not for the first time. I've been smoking those pr pretty much uh, on we, – we, we had, got a, we had uh, gotten a box of those. Yep. Uh, so if you want them, you certainly mm. help yourself. Yeah, uh, they're uh, they're super cool. JC Newman. Yeah, right? I mean yep. always always phenomenal sticks from over there, especially you know the Diamond Crown line, our sponsor. And uh, so the one I wanted to give uh, review on is uh, one of my favorites. Well, wait uh, a minute. What was yeah. your final assessment of that on the oh, Stogie oh, so rating system? On the Stogie rating system. The listeners system, are dying to know. So they're dying to know. So I would do uh, with the price point. I definitely do a fiver. Yep. Um, for sure. Um, the price point for these, let's say it's the Robusto. <laughs> A uh, box of 25 uh, is 136, mm -hmm. which is an awesome price point. So yeah. if you split that, you're looking at, you know, roughly 70 bucks. You get 12, 13 sticks out of it. Yep. At the price point, I, I would I would definitely do that. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, the pack of fives at 29, so it's like roughly six bucks a stick. I mean, you can't Good go summer wrong with stick, that. too, because yeah. it's shorter. You know, you're, you're, uh, well, here in the Northeast summer, the weather's nice. You guys have it longer out in Texas. But, yeah, you know. we have it. Ten months out of the year, sure. <laughs> yeah, right. But you know, it's a good summer stick too. You know, you don't want to be two hours away at your party and then yeah. not, you know, be a, a, a social misfit and whatnot. So yeah. it's a good size, good thing, portable stick. Construction's great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there nice. too. I do. I did the deep V this morning. Yeah, the, yeah. the creaminess. I love the creaminess of this. It's it's in you know it's a little bit of earth notes. It's got the pepper and that. It's just that really rich creamy smoke that I like. The retro hill is very nice. Yeah, uh, which I like. So uh, I would definitely give this a fiver. Awesome. I'd give it a fiver. So uh, the one that I wanted to review that I've smoked plenty of, which you know, is the Tatuaje uh, Noeas. Yeah. Uh, that is uh, one <laughs> of my favorite sticks. One of the things I want to first say is I love the dark oily wrapper on that stick. Um, the other thing I like is, is the band. It's just so simple. It's just, it's just a little Tatuaje band. It's, you know, yep. it's, it doesn't have all this you know, artwork and stuff. It's just straight to the point Tatuaje. Yep. Um, so uh, it's a five and a half by 42. Um, they call it the Noeas, which is uh, Corona, uh, which is the size. So um, you get cedar, uh, some cedar and pepper notes off of that. A uh, little bit of mocha into the cocoa, developing uh, after that first third of the stick, developing into a really earthy component, which I love. I love the earthy component of it, uh, uh, you know, with the cedar, a little bit of pepper in there. Uh, and the retro hail is very earthy, which mm -hmm. I love because, you know, he taught me how to retro hail since I started here. So there you go. Um, and uh, uh, I would uh, I would give this one a box split at the price point. Mm -hmm. uh, the price point I found it was two hundred two for a box. Yep. So it's it's not that bad. Um, I would definitely split a box just because I love the stick. It's it's a nice short forty five minute to an hour smoke. Yep. Um, love having that with a, a glass of bourbon uh, with those cedar the cedar notes that it has to it and in uh, that earthy component. So um, yeah, I love Tatuai. Awesome. Love Mark. Tatuai. Mark is our guest ready? Uh, yep. There you go. Mm. <laughs> well, you can't do six of the week, and the audience didn't hear that. So. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, awesome. So, yeah. Uh, we have enough time to do one more. So, gentlemen, you can choose. Uh, unless you want me to go. Either way. We'll let Jeff go ahead and take this one. It depends. Jeff, do you like it or do you not like it? <laughs> are you gonna start? Like, a are you gonna start a forest fire when you when it gets to the end? No, no, no. Uh, I just got to choose whether I want to do the Rara Esteli Brazilian Maduro mm. or let's go ahead and do the La Polina Blue label. Yes. Since that's Ooh. The new one. Okay. So uh, I, I do like the cigar quite yeah. a bit. Thank God. <laughs> so <laughs> not <only good. laughs> So uh, the La Polina I, Blue label, go for it. La Polina Blue. Um, the only size that we were able to get is the uh, let's go ahead and call it a Churchill. So not quite Toro gauge, uh, but very long cigar. Um, went ahead and did it uh, with a V cut after I had a nice meal and uh, paired it with uh, 
Bottle of Water and Organectomy's new album. So able to just go ahead and jam out and enjoy the cigar nice and slow. So um, first notes were a little bit peppery, uh, tons of spice notes to it. So lots of like cinnamon and nutmeg, a little bit of clove in there and uh a little bit of uh a little bit of wood i wouldn't call it oak uh wouldn't go that far to it uh, but still not unpleasant at all and after about the first inch all of that mellowed down and got into uh like some fresh malt cider um some fresh cut cherry wood and uh and from there it it got even more mellow into um, almost a uh, like honey kissed graham crackers and cinnamon. And mm. from there it stayed remarkably consistent all the way down to the end. So a, a very well constructed cigar, no burn problems whatsoever. Um, and again, which is remarkable for such a long cigar. Usually you get like a little bit of a run here and there, a little bit of inconsistency, but none of that at all. Uh, and the flavor profile for me would be perfect for after Thanksgiving, full, um, and you're sitting down watching the Cowboys just absolutely get their ass kicked for that. <laughs> Fall asleep with it, like right as you get down to the band, you're just, oh, like right there. What's the rating? Moment. Just, oh, fucking... If you can find a box of it, go ahead. Yeah, right. Yeah. Box and start aging them right now for that game. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, they're like, I'm a, I'll go ahead and let you know I'm a fan of a lot of what La Polina does. Yeah. But that is by far and away their masterpiece for yeah. sure. Um, very, very impressed with it. And the price point on it, uh, I don't, we don't, we don't have them in the shop yet. So, uh, we're waiting on that shipment, but it's, it's going to be, between twelve and fifteen dollars, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, it's it's not like unreasonable by any means. Uh, and most of their other stuff goes between like ten and twelve or thirteen, somewhere in there. Right. So, uh, so yeah, for the price point, it is absolutely well worth it. Um, then again, a very very good cigar, and uh, that was the one released at IPCPR twenty nineteen this year. So. Mm -hmm. uh, very, very happy with that cigar. And Absolutely. our wonderful boss, Nomi, was very, very uh, generous with uh, giving us a couple of those sticks. Yeah, to go ahead and try out. To try out. So, yeah, yeah very happy with that. Yeah. How does La Polina do in your section? Like your Actually, your, your section well, of town? Uh, pretty well. Yeah. So, we have a handful of, like, diehard customers who, like, they come in. We don't even need to, like, talk to them. They just come in and grab, like, a... A red label and a bronze label, and you know, away that. they go. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's uh, it's almost like you have the uh, Perdomo uh, customers. Yep. Like they know exactly what they want, and they'll come in and grab those. Yeah. Uh, other people who are looking for a recommendation, it's like, oh, you know, I want something kind of medium body, not too harsh. It's like, dude, fucking bronze label. Here you go. Try yeah. it. Come back whenever you let me know that you actually like it. Right. And yeah. And then we have another lock leader now. Nice. So, so what do you give the rating? No, for me, the rating, um, dude, I, again, uh, a box. Box split. Uh, oh, I mean, yeah, box worthy. Box, gotcha. Box yep. If you have the chance to buy a box, yeah. buy a box. box. Yeah. yeah. I just, dude, stick them in your humidor and agent. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and of course, assuming you have the finances to do it. Sure. So, uh, <laughs> if Absolutely. you, uh, if you don't have the finances to do it, go ahead and like find a buddy and split a box with it. Box split with so, a friend. There you go. So, yeah. Yeah. So, Absolutely, absolutely. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you. you guys are going to be here for the interview, so we will hear more and catch up in a little bit. Stogie uh, Geeks I listeners, we're going to take a quick break. Our interview's coming up. You don't want to miss it. That La Polina. Yeah, that oh. label was uh, 